All right, welcome everyone. Who knew workplace well-being could be so exciting, right? So as many of you probably know, today is Take Our Kids to Work Day. So it's the perfect time to talk about the intersection of work and family. We are so lucky because we get to spend the next 30 minutes talking about one of my favorite subjects, which is about um, joy and happiness at work. So how can we create workplaces that are so joyful and happy that when we leave, they make our lives much better? How does your personal purpose align with ours, right? Look, you really are empowered here to make a decision. And you really are empowered here to be yourself. What makes people happy at work is to accomplish amazing things with other people. all so much for being here. Hi, Ariana, you look great. Hi, Emily. <laughs> <laughs> um, and thank you so much to Virgin for, for having me and for all, to all of you for tuning in. This is such an important conversation and it, and it also uh, you know, affects me. I something like 80% of our li lives are spent at work. Um, and, uh, and I think it's very important that, uh, uh, that we have a big debate, a big discussion as to whether we can make sure our lives are are better, more enjoyable, more productive. Um. Companies that are doing that, that are prioritizing organizing their workplaces to enhance uh, workers' well-being, uh, are seeing immediate results on the bottom line and are seeing greater participation by women. So, uh, Holacracy is a specific uh, way of organizing a company and basically we're moving away from kind of the standard top-down hierarchical uh, management structure that you find in most companies to a hierarchy where it's not a hierarchy of people, but a hierarchy of purpose. At the point in time where we were, and frankly still are in a transformation of a company, we wanted to send our team a message. That message is we want everybody on deck focused, looking at innovation, collaboration, and using the benefits of their peers. Um, in order to evolve and change Yahoo. But I think for the vast majority of companies, um, uh, trusting people to work from home uh, is the right thing. And if they don't do their work, um, then you, you know, they no longer work for the company. Um, yeah, my chief of staff, I expect her to be on email 24 seven. That's the job. She has six kids. Uh, only, one of them, only one of them is out of the house. I don't know if she's watching or not, but I think she loves her job. She's on email. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Jim, I must say, with the greatest respect, I want to make a prediction. I want to say that before the decade is out, no employer will be able to say publicly that they expect their executive assistant to work 24-7. <laughs> we don't just follow the market, we follow our employees. So we give extra benefits for parents of children with autism. We cover gender reassignment surgery if people want that. And the story on egg freezing is an interesting one for our company. The reason it first came up is there was a young woman working at Facebook who got cancer. And she came to see me and said, okay, I'm gonna go through the treatment, but that means I will not be able to have children unless I can freeze my eggs and I can't afford it. But it's not covered under our medical policies. Do you have any ideas? And I had a conversation with Lori Goler, our head of HR, and we said, wow, we should be covering this. So the great American dream is to have a good job. So that's how I define my life. So if I have a job that matters, then I have a life that matters. So the next time you see a little girl called bossy, you walk right up to the people that did it, probably her own parents, and you say, that little girl's not bossy. That little girl has executive leadership skills. <laughs> <laughs>